Welcome back. In this video, I'm going to continue the Bomberman bombs tutorial. But what I'm going to do instead is I'm actually going to go back to the code that we wrote and shorten it quite a bit. Um, the original code I put there that made these bombs work the way they do ended up being a little bit long in some places. And I made some variables I probably didn't have to make. But I was trying to keep the idea of it simple to explain to beginners how they can start using instance IDs and instance variables to do little tasks like this. So here's what I'm going to fix. I know that making a fire piece to the right and to the left and above and below, it's very similar. The only thing that's really different is these things here, the 32. Sometimes it's 32 and 0. Sometimes it's negative 32 and 0. Sometimes the Y is plus 32, the X is 0. You know, there, there's a pattern to it, though, and the pattern lies with the degrees, the angle. When I'm moving to the right, we know in Game Maker, moving to the right is an angle of 0. And when you're moving up, the angle's 90. Left 180, down 270. I can actually relate this with sines and cosines to help me generate these 32s and zeros and negative 32s without having to have four giant blocks of code. But it will use sines and cosines. So if you're not into that, forget it. This isn't going to be for you. If you're okay with sines and cos, let's go for it. So first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to take out all those pieces. Now remember to leave, destroy the bomb. And I'm going to do everything inside a for loop. So what I want to do here is I'm going to go variable k0. I'm going to make a for loop. I'm going to start k0. k is going to keep going up to 270. And I'm going to make my k go up by 90. Okay. So what I'm doing here is I want k to represent the angle. Okay. I guess I could have called it angle, but I called it k, short typing. It's going to go 0. Then the next time it runs the loop, it's going to go up by 90. It'll be 90, so up. And then the next time, 180. Then the next time, 270. And that's the four directions. So it's going to cycle through my four directions and basically run the same code. And here's the code that I'm going to sneak in here. I'm just going to make two more variables here. I'm going to make variable dx. And I'm going to make variable dy. So I'm still going to use dx and dy. The difference is, is I want to be able to set them based on the angle. And here's what the little equation is. If you know your sines and cosines, dx is going to be 32 times the cosine of the angle. So the cosine of k. Now, I do have to actually change this to go degrees to radians k. Because game makers, cosines, and sines use radians and not degrees but that's basically my correct dx and my correct dy value so pretend this is zero degrees going to the right k zero degrees to radians zero to zero the cosine of zero is one if you don't know that from your math 10 11 12 class then yeah i guess you just got to trust us here and 32 times one is 32 so dx will be 32 the sine of 0, which relates to the y value, is going to be nothing, 0. So this is negative 32 times 0. So the dy will be 0. Now if you go through this, let me take like a value like 270, so pointing down. 270, the cosine is 0. 0 times 32 is 0. That's good. We're moving down. There is no dx. Sine of 270 is negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 32 is positive 32. And adding 32 to your y's is moving down, checking a slot down. So this little cosine sine line here takes care of all three of those other giant if statements I had before. Now I just have to replace them here. I'm going to call that dx. And I'll add in dy. I'll put dx. I'll put dy, and then this stays dx, and that stays dy. And that's it. That now does all four directions, because it's going to go through the loop four times. And each time dx and dy, it's going to be 0 and, or it's going to be 32 and 0. 0 and negative 32, negative 32 and 0, 
and 0 and positive 32. And notice, let's say it's 32 and 0. Place meeting, x plus 32, y plus 0. Make it at x plus 32, y plus 0. It just works. And then set the piece you just made to have the same dx value right? that you just found so that it can continue doing the same thing. So that's modification number one. Let's give it a test and actually see if this actually works. Cross your fingers here. Uh-oh. One curly brace. There we go. That's closed in the for loop. Let's make that a bit more obvious. Perfect. Let's run it and make our bomb. Hopefully we get all four pieces going. And if we do, I'm going to add one more modification that makes this even better. So cross your fingers. We get all four here. Beautiful. And I think that tested all directions. And so all directions tested. Perfect. So it works. So, you know, you can screenshot this or pause there and just sort of soak that in for a minute. Now, the next thing we get to do is we get to look at this and say, you know what? If I can replace the dx dy by remembering an angle, I can probably just remember the angle of a fire piece as well. And I really can. So you could leave it like this, but I'm going to go even farther here and I'm going to make this even better. I'm going to quickly go to my fire piece and in the create, I was keeping track of dx and dy. I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm actually going to use the built-in direction variable that every object has, and I'm just going to keep track of that. Okay, that's all I need to know. If I know the angle, I can find dx and dy myself. So let's just do that. Direction. Now when my piece is made by the bomb, I don't need to set the dx and the dy. I just have to go, hey, bomb I just made. Set your direction equal to the angle. Well, the angle is k. It's 0, 90, 180, or 270. So, hey, direction, set yourself equal to K. Perfect. Now, what's the fire piece going to do with that direction? Well, let's go take a peek. Take the fire piece. And in create, yeah, direction is there. Good. Let's go to the alarm where the fire piece makes more fire. So, where it makes more fire... It was checking here, dx and dy. Now, we don't have that anymore. We took it out. There is no dx, dy, dx, dy. We only have direction. So let's just set that up. Variable dx equals 32 times the cosine degrees to radians of my direction. Variable dy is negative 32 times the sine, degrees to radians, direction. For those, by the way, wondering why the negative, remember that's because it's why you go up the screen, you get smaller y's, right? It's reverse from math, so you got to throw that negative sign in there. Direction, there we go. Beautiful. Now when we say place meeting, now we've got our dx and our dy quickly calculated based on the direction. Remember the direction. Even though this piece isn't moving, it still has a direction variable with a value that we've assigned. So I have dx, dy, that's good. dx, dy, perfect. And da, 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 da. let's take this out and just say, hey, FID, set your direction equal to my direction. And then still set the count variable to go down by one. And that's it. So, you know, we've cleaned this up to about what, one, two, four, five lines there. And in the bomb, basically, we clean that up to a solid eight lines there of real work. That's not bad. We got like 23 lines, and we got these bombs exploding until they hit walls. Of course, let's do a test. I'm getting old, make mistakes. Let's see if this thing works. Cross your fingers. The bombs still go off. Come on. Oh, yeah, and they still work, and they still don't go through walls. Everything's beautiful. Nice. That's basically it. Not for everybody, but if you uh, have paid attention to math class and learned your math, and you know your little uh, 
and you know your sines and cosines, you can really find a lot of places and games where you can sneak this in and save yourself a lot of code when things are based off angles and a pattern. I hope you enjoyed that and maybe learned a little. Thanks.